Today I am in Western Panama and I am looking for velvet worms. These velvet worms can be found at night, uh, although it's somewhat tough, but I think I'm gonna be mostly looking for them during the day, but I will do some amount of searching at night for them too. Just flip this large stone with leaf cutter ants. You can see they've brought in little pieces of leaves and down here is their brain, so to speak. No, this is just the complex where they store all their food. Under the stone, they've cleared out all the dirt. They've created kind of a donut around it. There's always a buffer space between where they grow the fungus and where the dirt meets the rock. And there's tons and tons of little pits in here to increase the surface area. And they continue to store leaves in there, even where the fungus is already growing. And it's continually maintained. Some people may tell you that looking for um, velvet worms is quite tough because they're rare but that is kind of just bullshit. It depends on the species, of course, but if you know where to look, it should be fairly straightforward. So this stump is one that's not gonna be here too much longer. It's gonna get removed. So I thought I'm just gonna look through some of these pieces here of bark and the actual trunk. And if I find any, I will show you that. So I got this piece of wood and now it has a lot of pockets because termites used to live in it, and I have to tear apart these different sections because the velvet worms we're looking for could be hiding anywhere. I just took this piece off from here. There's a velvet worm sitting in there. I can't take it out just as is, so I'm going to clear out a little more of the wood around it. And it looks like we have an adult in there. There's its head. I just took one half of this wood off and split it. I can see a little better in there. I don't know if you can see this, but down inside that wood, there's a smaller one. I was poking the velvet worm with this stick. It decided to shoot at me. And now there's these sticky threads with all these little liquid beadlets. And that's what it uses to subdue its prey. Here's the large velvet worm. Here's another one making its way out. It looks like there's a third one in there. That doesn't show up on camera, but I promise you there's another one. And I'll get that one out as well. We can take a look at all three of them. So here is the family that I extracted from that piece of wood. We have a little baby in here. See that little guy? And then there is an adult. I say that's an adult. There's another adult in there and then there's a medium-sized one. So we had four all sitting in the same piece of wood uh, and they're known for this. They're, um, they're semi-communal. Uh, actually, look at that. One, two. There's two babies in here. I take that back. Okay, so there's five sitting in the same place. Even though it is possible to find them in groups, I don't think I'm gonna be finding any more uh, in this density. Uh, but that being said, hopefully we do find at least one more group of, I don't know, two? That'd be pretty cool. But I'm gonna put them in that stump that I found them in, all of them, uh, just so that they stay together as a family. Look, more leaf cutter ants. And they're just storing more leaves kind of in a frenzy now. Oh, and down here we have a little velvet worm. And this one definitely needs to be saved. The ants are biting me now. Um, I'm going to take this one and relocate it. A large click beetle, very pretty one too. And it is clicking. I tried to get it to hop on my hand, but it won't click on, unless it's provoked. So I can't really get it to jump. I really wanted to. And these are from the family Elateridae. The larvae are known as wireworms. They're pretty strange looking. I pulled this rock out of the wall. This one right here. It's kind of a roadside bank. And in here, there is a velvet worm. I mean, there's one down there in the dirt. I think it fell down from up here. Here's one of them. Let's see. Let me um, dig up the second one here, which is a bit larger. Actually, I'm a little bit surprised that neither of them have spat on me yet. Uh, usually they will if they're active to some extent when you find them. And the one on the left certainly is, though it doesn't really seem like it. And since this one is sitting upside down, there's the underside. The smaller one is starting to move now. You can tell they look quite different once they've extended. I disturbed this one and you can see all that webbing stuff there with the little drops. That's because the velvet worm spat on me. All right, I made a bad attempt at lodging this stone back into the wall. Now I'm going to release this guy now. And here's the... Oh, there, there you go. It just spat on me. And it just spat on me again because I'm trying to move it off to release it. And you just see that? 
It spat on the other velvet worm. Poor guy. That was unwarranted. Not very nice. Oh, nice. A velvet worm. And this one is really quite large. Actually, maybe the largest one that we've seen. And next to it, we have the molt of a Paraphrinus. Kind of cool. I found the owner of the molt that we were just looking at. Not sure where the molt went. I thought I put it back down here. Oh, there it is. And the Paraphrinus is sitting on the side here. And there's the velvet worm. So as usual, Paraphrinus doesn't really mind the presence of uh, what's typically a predator for other arthropods. So it's sitting with this velvet worm who, if it spat on the Paraphrinus, could definitely dissolve its exoskeleton. Looks like the spider doesn't even care about the uh, velvet worm all that much, as expected. I'm gonna place this Amblypygid rock back in here. There he goes. I actually noticed something in the corner of my eye when I was releasing this guy. There's the first Amblypygid. And there's one down there too. Found a third Paraphrinus in this rock pile. Seems to be quite a few of them. This one is the smallest, of course. It's just a juvenile. Here's one of the other ones. Night has fallen and it is time to go look for a couple of velvet worms, at least, I hope, out at night. I think I know where to look, uh, though I'm not absolutely certain, because the places you're supposed to look at night are not necessarily the same as during the day, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. Boana Rosenbergi here. A frog that typically will stay still for the camera until you disturb it. And that line on the head there is not, I don't know if it's diagnostic per se, but it's something you see on practically all of them. All the ones I've seen at least, as well as um, the nose forming uh, two little bumps. Looks like we've got a velvet worm here. Uh, this one may be a different species than the other ones because it has this little crown. I'm not so sure. And I was supposed to be finding them sort of out and about, but I had a sudden urge to flip something. And all this wood is burnt, so I wasn't really expecting to see much. Um, I think I'm going to hold on to this one and do a little comparison with one of the other ones. I'm seeing the one without the white crown. See, it's raising its head towards me. Are you going to spit? No. Maybe not. I think that little one may have also been whatever this is, if it's a different species too, because it had a little crown. Here's that little velvet worm with the white crown on the head. And here is a normal one. And let me show you the head. There you go. I don't know if these are a different species or what's going on, but I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, this one is way larger, but I had shown you um, some juveniles earlier and we've ruled out that uh, that it's a thing of size. Look, Tidius, this is our second largest scorpion out here. And I have no idea what it's doing, to be honest. It's acting very strangely. Oh, there it goes. I think I had one of its legs stuck. It's leaving now. Usually you don't find these on the ground, but I guess that one was. There's a velvet worm kind of poking through a hole in this leaf here. Uh, this is one of the um, tropical sting nettles, so I'm going to try to be a bit careful here. Oh, it fell. Where'd it go? Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've been able to flip a second little velvet worm here, and the reason I'm actually flipping it right now at night, after having flipped that other one, is because oftentimes you can see some pretty interesting stuff under logs at night as opposed to during the day. Here we have a balboana, not sure what species, and then we have a stick insect. I thought this one looked kind of funny. First off, it has pretty convincing uh, camouflage, however it shouldn't be really sitting on a leaf. I think that's pretty obvious. And I thought it had really weird proportions where its abdomen stuck out bizarrely long. I wanted to show you this velvet worm here. I thought it was pretty interesting. This is the old colony of a termite. They used to be up in a tree, could have been this one. Uh, that's where they usually build them. And it's no longer in use, obviously. It's fallen down. This is the area where it used to be attached. And this velvet worm is definitely not here by coincidence. These guys oftentimes like to hang out um, inside stumps 
and other areas that are kind of vertical where they can hide. And this is a perfect place for them to be because it's so pitted. There's all sorts of places that it can fit into. But yes, a velvet worm would much rather be on one of these than one that would be, say, flattened. And I think the reason for that is because they are semi-arboreal and they like to climb. So if you were to take down a dead tree like this one, you'd probably be able to find more than if you found some random log on the ground like that one and tore it apart. Well, that is all of the velvet worms we're gonna look for. Um, we found about a dozen or so, so those are some pretty good numbers. But yeah, thank you for watching.